right so now angiotensin 2 has made a long travel going to the hypothalamus stimulate which nucleus angiotensin 2 adh supraoptic nuclei excellent supraoptic nuclei are stimulated and eventually the supraoptic nucleus have the nerve endings in posterior pituitary still and from there adh come into blood what adh will do i will not go into detail just trust me i'm right what adh will do it will make the last part of the nephron more permeable to water it will under the direction of adh right the cells of last part of the nephron become more permeable to water is that right and you know that last part of the nephron is going to medulla of the kidney is that right and when this nephron is moving towards the middle medullary interstitium medullary interstitium is hyperosmolar do you know that or not when i will teach you kidney you will know that very clearly that medullary interstitium is hyperosmolar osmolality here is very high when this part of the nephron become water permeable here fluid is hyposmolar here fluid is hyperosmolar water will move from hyposmolar area it will be pulled to hyperosmolar area so water will rush from where yes from the last part of the nephron from the lumen water will rush through the cells to the interstitium so there will be increased water reabsorption so that water should not be lost into urine is that right and this water which is coming back it's too easy to understand this water will increase blood volume increase venous return of course increase cardiac filling increase contractility increase stroke volume increase cardiac output increase systolic blood pressure again we reach to the blood pressure it again reaches the blood pressure is that right am i clear any other function of uh, angiotensin 2 extremely important function of angiotensin 2 yet not mentioned is it is a super stimulator of sympathetic nervous system this is a super stimulator of sympathetic nervous system so angiotensin 2 receptors are present even lot of component of sympathetic nervous system so what really happens look here central sympathetic outflow will increase number one then these cells in the ganglia sympathetic ganglia they are also stimulated first central sympathetic outflow is stimulated then these ganglia are stimulated then if this is the post ganglionic nerve ending let's suppose this is the target tissue on which this nerve ending is ending this target tissue may be venous smooth muscle this may be arteriolar smooth muscle or this target tissue may be myocardium normally what happen that post ganglionic sympathetic nerve endings release nor epinephrine nor epinephrine work on the receptors and once nor epinephrine which is released and has done its action on the receptor it 80% of it is taken back by the nerve ending is that right this is normal physiology now what angiotensin will do here angiotensin 2 has receptors here also it will stimulate the nerve ending in such a fashion the release of norepinephrine will be increased and reuptake of the norepinephrine will be reduced so amount of norepinephrine which is present in this area is reduced or increased if nerve ending is producing more norepinephrine if nerve ending under the direction of angiotensin 2 is releasing more norepinephrine and not recapturing it then amount of norepinephrine present in the synapse is less or more it is more if you are releasing something more and not taking it back so that that thing will be there less or more you know it so in this way norepinephrine will be more in this area and even angiotensin 2 has receptors which increase the adrenergic receptor concentration on the target tissue so it means what no, uh, angiotensin 2 is doing it is increasing the whole parameters of sympathetic nervous system increasing the sympathetic central sympathetic outflow increase increasing stimulation of sympathetic ganglion increased stimulation of sympathetic nerve ending increase responsiveness of target tissue i'll see what will happen with this look if sympathetic nervous system works more on the veins veins will 
construct. When they will construct further, more increase in venous return. Oh, now you must tell me. More cardiac filling, more contractility, more cardiac output, and more stroke volume. Uh, sorry, more increase in systolic blood pressure, right? This veno construction. Meanwhile, when sympathetic activity is increased on the arterioles, more arterial construction and increase in diastolic blood pressure. When sympathetic activity increases and releases more norepinephrine here, more release of renin, whole system is amplified. Is that right? And then we should not forget something very important. Angiotensin 2 has receptors on the central thirst system. So when angiotensin 2 work on the those group of neurons which control the feeling of thirst, patient who is bleeding, he will feel thirsty. Of course, he will ask water. And if you have it, he will take the water and try to increase blood volume. Again, that is helpful. By all these means, what angiotensin 2, I must say, by all these means, renin angiotensin aldosterone excess, what it is doing? It is trying to elevate the blood volume and blood pressure. Is that right? Am I clear to everyone? No problem. This is physiological functions of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone. But one most important pathological function I did not tell you. There are some diseases in which blood flow to kidneys chronically low. For example, if you have congestive cardiac failure. If you have a cardiac failure, heart has a very poor out cardiac output. For example, I have very severe heart failure. My systolic function or contractility of the ventricle is very poor. Whatever the reason. If my heart is a poor pump, my blood flow to every organ is reduced, including blood flow to kidneys reduced. So all those patients in which heart fail at the pump, cardiac output become less, then blood flow even to the kidney is reduced. And in these patients, there is chronic activation of renin, angiotensin, aldosterone excess. You understand it? In the same way, who as person has cardiac failure, of course, is blood pressure also drops, so sympathetic stimulation is also chronically activated. So patient who have congestive cardiac failure, right, in them, there's chronic sympathetic activation and there's chronic renin, angiotensin, aldosterone activity. When angiotensin 2 level is chronically increased, then something really very bad happen. What happened? If angiotensin 2 is chronically in increased and aldosterone is chronically increased, this chronically increased angiotensin 2, right, and aldosterone will work on the myocardium <coughs> and change the morphology of the heart. Now, this is something which is recently discovered, but very, very important. The patient with congestive cardiac failure have chronic elevation of angiotensin 2 and aldosterone and they chronically work on the myocardial cell and fibroblast there. They stimulate the proto-oncogenes, genes which are concerned with growth. These all myocardial cells start producing growth factors. If myocardial cells start produ and producing growth factor and these growth factor which are produced by the myocardium work on the myocardial cells, so myocardial cell undergo hypertrophy. But this is not normal hypertrophy, it is pathological hypertrophy. At the same time, myocardial cells and fibroblasts start producing extra amount of connective tissue. So myocardial cells become abnormal, abnormally enlarged, and in between the myocardial cell, lot of fibrotic tissue and extracellular matrix is deposited. And these things, under chronic influences, these things, under chronic influences, lead to alteration in geometry of the heart. Chronically elevated aldosterone levels and chronically activated angiotensin 2 level in congestive cardiac failure lead to morphological changes in the heart.